Hello Sagittarius, welcome to September 2016. This is Gwendolyn. Uh, welcome back to the channel or welcome if it's your first time. This video is going to be a video for September 2016 for Sagittarius. Um, and one thing I'll say is that we just entered a Mercury retro period on August 30th and that will be lasting throughout most of the month of September. Um, until say the 21st or 22nd right around in there um, so it's not really a, a great time for beginning new projects it's really a good time to be finishing up old projects completions during mercury retrograde it's a time to uh, do all the things that start with re so revisit revise reconsider reassess relax rejuvenate um, and just to finish things that were started but never completed because it's kind of like a backwards time. It's not a great time to sign contracts, not a great time to do any medical procedures or set appointments for travel. Things that begin in Mercury Retro are often undone later. So good time for completions. Um, we do have a new moon on the 1st of September, but I'm just going to recommend that uh, it's a good time for dreaming of things but not actually putting things into place but rather to complete old projects. So without further ado, here is the Terrascope for September 2016 for Sag. I also have this new cloth. So some of you who may be familiar with this channel may recognize a different cloth uh, that I use. So if you prefer this one, let me know down in the comments, please. Um, I'm always curious to see if it's it's better for the viewers and for my stars um, to see the reading better or what the better preferences are. So if you like this cloth, let me know. If you like the old one, let me know. And um, I'm just going to get straight into Sag here. So it looks like the month opens with... Um, Page of Swords in Reverse and Ace of Swords in Reverse. Um, those are those are air signs. So Page of Swords usually represents Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra, um, and Page is usually a younger person. So this could either be the younger side of yourself, or literally it could be a younger air sign. Um, and Page of Swords represents, you know, someone who is idealistic, someone who is willing to defend a cause, someone who is willing to stand up at the mountaintops and declare what they believe in. Swords represent the air element and thought and mentality. So this he, he has this one thought, this one truth, this one idea that he's willing to defend. When this shows up in the reverse position, it could either be like a young person, a young air sign who is being stubborn or dogmatic or, you know, just kind of sticking to their ideals. They could be a little bit rebellious in this position. Or it could mean that you're not defending, standing up for what you believe in, you know, questioning, having doubts or fears about pursuing um, what it is that you think, what it is that is true. And right next to Ace of Swords in reverse, I'm going to say there's some some way in which someone is not seeing the truth. Either this air sign is not connecting with the truth or they're misrepresenting the truth. Or I'm seeing, usually this guy is pretty connected with the truth. So it may be that they think one thing, but it's just not accurate. So it's not necessarily dishonest, but it's just that they're not seeing clearly. Or it could be, perhaps be the younger side of yourself um, not seeing clearly that you may be thinking, no, I know what's right. No, I know how things should go. You know, this is how it, this is how it is. But in conjunction with Ace of Swords in reverse, there's, there's something that is in shadow. There's something that's not being seen correctly. Normally Ace of Swords means the, the truth, the one truth, the one idea. You can see it's crowned in victory here with laurels. It comes out from the sky and it's handed from the universe. It's like, the truth in all of its glory. But in reverse, next to this page of swords in reverse, he's actually looking away from the truth. There's someone who's not seeing things clearly. And it could be you, Sag, the younger part of yourself, uh, either being stubborn or being like dedicated to your version of the truth. Or it could be a younger air sign, so um, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. So that's what the month opens up with, is that someone is not seeing some things clearly. 
and you may know who that is. Um, if, if that's you, Sad, you may want to just see if you can open up to looking at things from a different point of view. That will help you connect with the, the actual truth and not what is just perceived. And if it's, if it's a younger person, uh, you may just have to connect over here with Empress who's standing for prosperity and abundance and not, you know, let them go their own way. They're headed off in a different direction. There's also Ten of Wands here, which is showing up. And this card normally means like heavy, carrying heavy burdens. It's sometimes translated as oppression, but here in the reverse position, um, it's there's it could go two ways. One, it may mean that your burdens are lightening, that your things, you whatever felt heavy before may seem lighter, or it may mean that you're resistant to letting things go that you think you have to carry. So when this card shows up, I always ask, what is it that you can put down that's not necessary? He's carrying the most amount of wands in this card, and this card usually represents feeling weary, feeling tired, feeling like like carrying too much. Um, but there's always the option to put things down and let go of things that aren't yours. Like if you're carrying someone else's baggage or if you're dealing with someone else's responsibilities, this card, this person's figure in this card is very responsible and carries all this stuff and does the work and um, sometimes they carry more than their own fair share. So when this card shows up I say, you know, what can you put down that is breaking your back? What is it that you can unload? Um, in the reverse position you may have fears or doubts about letting go of stuff, like if I let this go everything's gonna fall apart or it may also be lightning. So. Regardless, either way, I'd like you, at the beginning of September, Sag, I'd like you to take a look and see what is it that is no longer yours to carry, what is completing, because this is a 10, 10 means the end of the cycle, um, something finishing up. You also have a 10 down here right next to death, that's definitely a completion of the cycle, so whatever it is that, if there's an end that you're resisting also at the beginning of the month, it's going to show up here at the end of the month. This is when the 10 is showing up in um, full force. So ask ask what it is that you no longer need to carry, Sag. That's, that's coming up for you because there may be something that is obscuring the truth, especially regarding a younger person or an air sign. Um, and then it looks like, too, at the beginning of the month, you have some nice cards that have to do with strength, with endurance, with prosperity. You've got Empress and Strength following one another. So I'll start with Empress here. Empress is a card of prosperity, of growth, of abundance. She's the pregnant queen, the pregnant Empress. So everything around her grows. She's very fertile. She is sort of like rich soil that, you know, money or plants or anything can grow in. So when she appears, it means feeling satisfied. It means feeling abundant. It means having everything that you want and need and just sort of luxuriating in all the richness and, and all the growth that is around you. If you've had a project that you've been working on, Sag, Empress should show you some good fruits of your labor. Um, if you are trying to give birth to something, this is a very good time or um, archetype to have to surround that birth. Like if you're doing any sort of creative project or if you're had, trying to have kids or if there's like a money ve money venture that you're trying to, say a new business that you're trying to give birth to, this is a great uh, symbol for that because she she normally has like a crown of stars um, there's usually sh shouts um, like she's got wheat in her hand which represents the harvest everything that has to do with growth and reaping a harvest um, is is to do with Empress and I'm going to actually put her here so you can see these three cards um, I'm seeing in the middle of the month, if you can have strength and fortitude and endurance, this card is surrounded by cards of prosperity. This is actually the millionaire's card. This is seven of coins. And this is the farmer card as well. So it's got a similar theme to Empress here. She usually actually appears in the spring and summer and then is the queen of the harvest. She's sort of... Um, 
similar to Demeter or Ceres in the Greek and Roman traditions, the Queen of the Harvest. And this is the Farmer card, which also talks about the harvest. And you can see how there's all this money here that is growing on the vine, and it needs time to sweeten and ripen before it is it can be harvested, otherwise it's going to be sour. So if you think about grapes, and if you try to harvest them too soon, you get sour grapes. You need time to let them sweeten, just like any crop. Any harvest needs time to come to its full fruition before it can be harvested. And this is a card of patience as well. So is strength. Strength can be a card of endurance and fortitude and softness. She doesn't open the lion's mouth through force. She opens it through soft, gentle um, coaxing. There's a, a real feminine element here that shows that it's going to be through patience, through endurance, through fortitude. If you're giving birth to anything, you may need to like just let it develop over time. Take time to um, let the strength of this develop, let the flavor of those grapes develop. So I'm seeing some really great cards in terms of prosperity. This is a wonderful money card, so is Empress. But I'm also seeing that there may need to be some patience employed, both with strength. You may need to uh, endure some fortitude. Strength comes through being able to get through things, being able to tap into your inner strength, being able to um, go through any challenges in a dignified, strong, unwavering way. And, and Farmer, or the Millionaire's card, talks about that too. It's a real time, especially with this Mercury retrograde going on, it's a real time to reassess, to, and that's what this card is about too, reconsider, like, is this the garden that I want to be sowing? Are these the fruits that I want to be uh, reaping? You know, do I need to sow different seeds? Am I receiving the money? Is the money looking like it's going to come in in the way that I think it's going to? Is this what I want to be doing? Is this how I want to be spending my time? Farmer sort of like leans on his hoe there, um, his garden implement, and thinks about these things and reconsiders. And, you know, he's got some time on his hands while his harvest ripens. So that's what's going on for you, Sag. There may be some patience at the middle of the month that is required um, in order to reap your harvest, in order to let that abundance come in. And it's actually, it might be a little challenging for you to take a time out and consider things because this Four of Swords card is all about that. This is re relaxation, um, and this is R&R, &R. you know, we can see this soldier here who's taking a time out from battle. I call it resting to fight another day. And Four of Swords means um, just putting things on hold. The fact that it's showing up in the reverse position, along with this card, Ten of Wands in reverse, really shows me that you may have some resistance to taking a time out because you may be thinking, oh, I'm too busy, there's no way I can possibly take time to reconsider, you know, to take time out. I've got too much to do, is what Ten of Wands says. Like, I've got too many things to carry, too many irons in the fire. There's no possible way I can put anything down. But Four of Swords says, you know, you need to rest. You need to take a time out. You need to recharge, is what this card says. The fact that it's in the reverse position says, no, I can't, I don't have time. There's resistance, there's doubt, there's fear. If I... If I take a time out, everything's going to fall apart. I can't possibly do that. You're, you might want to reconsider that, Sag. In the middle of the month, this, is a, this energy is showing up for you, and it's saying you, especially with the Ten of Wands, you may really need to take that time out, even if it feels impossible. It may just be like you know a five-minute cat nap during the day, or a little bit of meditation, or just taking time, like 15 minutes before you go to sleep, to collect your thoughts. Some way or another, you need to carve that time out for yourself, Sag, in the middle of the month, because that is that is what's going to give you time to think and reconsider and and really sort of allow in this prosperous um, idea, this birth. Um, you're, it's almost like she's waiting for you there, but you can't get through it. You can't get through to her until you address this. Like if I have so much going on, I can't, I can't give birth to a new project or idea. Even though this might be very prosperous, this might be very uh, abundant, it might be very, it might bring in a lot of new growth for you. You might have to take some time and patience to consider how you're going to 
plant that that new thing that brings you the money and you're going to also have to take a time out put things down that aren't necessary that are uh, excessive excessive burdens and think about things just with no action no activity so that's the middle of the month for you and you can see too one thing I'll say Sag is that when you have too much here ten of wands and then you take this time out if you can get through the resistance or the fear of, of going through this process you can you actually end up in a much stronger much more confident capable um, place this is knight of wands and knight of wands is full of fire full of action wands represent fire activity passion motivation optimism energy and you can see he's ready to fight it's sort of like after he's gathered himself through resting he's got energy again he's got passion this card is very different very active and it's in the upright position from these cards this one is overburdened oh no, no extra room or energy for anything else after you rest you can even see he's wearing the same armor here if he takes a time out he gets reinvigorated and this card is a card of confidence willingness to take anything on in the rider weight, he's um, on a horse that is up on two legs, so he's ready to charge. And he's got, you know, confidence, cockiness, um, daring, courage. It's it's again evoking the courage of strength. I'm gonna say this this happens for you because this is showing up late in the month. It's gonna happen for you after the Mercury retrograde. Um, corrects after Mercury goes back direct after the 21st or the 22nd, that's the time to take action. That's the time to be reinvigorated. Up until that time, um, it's really a time for consideration of things, reflecting, letting go of what you can let go of, welcoming in this new prosperous, abundant time. So know that you'll get here if you can address your resistance your, any fears or doubts about taking a time out, letting things go that aren't yours? What, what baggage are you carrying that is not yours or that you can put down? And also, middle of the month, you know, you've got some very powerful imagery here. Judgment is a major arcana card. Also, with death here, there might be some resistance in letting go. Judgment, though, is, you know, with these two cards and then this ten of swords, there's something that's going to die and you're going to have to let go of all of these cards are about some sort of end of cycle, death, and renewal. Um, judgment is a card that I usually associate with forgiveness. Judgment can be either experiencing judgment, like critical judgment, judging others, but usually I see it as like being cleansed by this sort of spiritual fire. I also say you need, when this card shows up, you need to let the ghosts of the past go. Um, these are like old souls that are sort of like in a gray neutral color and they need to be, it's like letting the past go behind you and the new fire that you get when you either employ forgiveness towards someone, letting that old baggage go, it's a similar theme to this card, and it's feeling cleansed, it's feeling renewed, it's like a, a card of recovery, a card of new, new spirit, new energy, new life, really, because this is like when the souls are being called back up for resurrection. It's like, it's literally like being resurrected. Uh, the old you gets breathed new life into that's what this fire energy is it's like cleansing and that's you know very it's a powerful forgiveness card so if there's someone that you need to forgive some way that you need to let the past go you, you may have some um revelations or some ideas some thoughts that come to you during this rest period if you can take it that allow you to move on in a new way that allow you to have this sort of renewed spiritual fire because there is going to be something that you're going to need to let go of especially towards the end of the month here and it, you might resist it this death in reverse death is you know it's a pretty clear card it's an ending of some sort we, it doesn't allow the rose to keep on living to keep on blooming it's come to a full fruition it's the full bloom it can't go any further and the ten of swords says you know if you keep going along this path it drains life out of you there's something that it and usually this is a belief system that needs to be let go of you can see again swords represent ideas and thoughts so these are the collection of thoughts the collection of ideas that end up draining the life out of the man 
Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to mean a literal death, but with these two together, something is definitely ending for you, Sag. And I'm going to say right around the end of the month, right around the 21st, 22nd to the end of the month, you may be resistant to cutting that cord or cutting that cycle, letting that, letting that rose go. Um, but if you try to continue thinking about it in the same way that you have, it's only going to drain you. You really need to, this says to me, all three of these in, you know, really in order this way, says there's, you really need to let something go. Uh, that it reminds me of this Buddhist quote, like, um, let go or be dragged. That's what's going on here. It's, it's the end of the rose's life. You can either, you can either you know, let things go in the past and be spiritually renewed by it. Or if you try to continue thinking about it in the same way, it's only going to drain you. So Sag, with these two major arcana cards showing up with Ten of Swords, it's very strong message. Let go. Let it, let the cycle complete. Um, there's, it really, I'm just really getting with these three cards in, in this order, let go or be dragged. There's not, there's nothing that you can do to keep that rose blooming. So that's, that's happening. There's something that you're going to need to let go of right around third week of September, towards the end of September. But what's wonderful is you get this real renewed energy. Like I said before, the night of rods, once you get through that sort of what I'll call dark night of the soul, or, you know, it's always darkest before the dawn, you get... Ace of Cups is one of the best cards for a new beginning. This this means like my cup runneth over. Aces always represent new beginnings. This cups represent heart energy. And so this is like feeling emotionally full. This is feeling full of creativity, full of joy, full of passion. Especially with this card too. There's a lot of passionate energy with these two together. Because this is fire, um, it represents renewed invigoration, optimism, courage, passion, daring, boldness. And this is saying it's something that you love. It's something like, this is sort of like freedom, a creative creative project or a new love. I always say with this card, it's like my cup runneth over. You've got this dove of peace and this lotus of enlightenment. Really interestingly, you know, these three cards in this row are very strong. It means connecting with prosperity and abundance, connecting with forgiveness and renewal. And this says, you know, being enlightened. That's the symbol of the lotus. It's another Buddhist symbol for coming up through the mud and being enlightened, getting all this wonderful um, emotional fulfillment and energy that brings you peace, brings you a new love, a new beginning. So it could be like a new love um, in, in terms of a relationship or a person or a new love in terms of something that you find, you know, yourself being totally engrossed with, totally passionate about, something that you love to do, um, an artistic pursuit, a, a, new, a new endeavor, a new, anything that seems, it's a new uh, chapter of the heart. So Ace of Cups, something that fills you, that you're so full that it overflows. And this says you have the, the passion, the courage, the drive to pursue it. So that's my reading for you, Sag. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to put them down in the comments. I always love answering those. And as always, um, I just want to thank everyone for watching. Yours in the stars.